Right, so I'm, I'm here with Stuart Butterfield at the Tiny Spec office in, in Yale Town, and he's going to tell us a bit about Glitch. So, so how do you describe uh, the experience of playing Glitch? Well, the intention is that the experience is very social, that, um, <clears throat> like I said, the highest level, we're providing a whole world and a framework of items and mechanics and physics and stuff like that, but it's up to the player to decide how to develop the world. And so they have to consult with each other, come up with a plan. Sometimes they have competing plans for how to develop the world. The immediate experience is often walking around. There's a chicken. Um, I know that uh, I can squeeze chickens to get a little bit of grain. Mm -hmm. um, I can harvest from these trees, but I also have to take care of them, petting and watering them um, so that the, the world is taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, I think the ambition is really that... Uh, so what are you doing right there? Um, I just completed a quest to um, get 10 trees up to the maximum health. So I just got a bunch of rewards for it. So what's, what's the ambition? The ambition is that um, the game ultimately becomes about uh, people creating culture. And it sounds a little bit weird because... It's not totally freeform. It's not um, completely user generated. The art's coming from us, um, mm -hmm. but people have a lot of power to rearrange and recombine things. And there are, are already a number of, and there'll be more societal level mechanics, so people can create groups which can be modeled more like a cult or a religion or a corporation or whatever. I mean, obviously, it's often mostly very tongue in cheek. Mm -hmm. um, but from that, they develop a culture and decide how to expand the world and how to grow it and what parts of it to support and what parts mm -hmm. of it to let go. Um, how does, uh, you know, what's the relationship between uh, this game and, and the game that, you know, ultimately created uh, Flickr? Um, well, they're definitely, they have the same germ of an idea, but um, that game was started in 2002 mm -hmm. and it's just a totally different world. I mean, technologically, there's a lot more free and open source software, computers are faster, hardware is cheaper, mm -hmm. and most significantly, uh, there's a lot more people online. I mean, I think it's almost like the, the proverbial frog in the slowly boiling water that we don't notice what a big change it is that almost everyone's on Facebook, mm -hmm. um, or that almost everyone spends a significant portion of their discretionary time online. Um, whether that's online sitting in front of a laptop with a browser window or um, on their mobile device or whatever. They're, people are much more connected to each other through electronic means than they have been at any time in history. Mm -hmm. um, and that makes a big difference in building a game like this. It's just a much bigger audience, a much bigger um, set of possibilities for how we develop it. What's, what's new and different about uh, this game compared to other MMOs? Um, well, I don't... There are some... Actually, I can't really think of any MMOs that aren't about fighting in the end. Um, there's a lot of kind of virtual world games that aren't very game-like, that don't involve much fighting. Um, but this isn't really like that either. There's a lot more game structure to this. So, um, I mean, I'd, I'd say that's the biggest thing, is that it's neither totally open-ended, like say something like Second Life, where you're just plopped in and you're like, go for it. You get a blank slate and a bunch of um, almost like programmer's tools to script the world. Um, but it's also not something like um, uh, World of Warcraft or Astronaut's Call or Eve mm -hmm. or Darkfall or any number of another, you know, those games where you have swords and cast spells and try to kill each other. Mm -hmm. so, so how are players going to help you guys uh, create the world? Um, well, they literally build it. I mean, they're unlocking uh, new areas and we'll stay ahead of them. Whichever direction they push in, we'll continue developing content in, in that style. Um, and the world is really, in one sense, like a collaborative simulation. So you probably played um, SimCity at some point in your life. Yeah. Rather than one person being the top-down god controlling every all the little ants, it's um, a bottom-up emergent simulation where people are making individual decisions about how they want to play and how they want the world to go, and then the simulation changes according to that. So one criticism of um, World of Warcraft that you often hear from people who've had the desire to play massive multiplayer games for a long time is that it's really an amusement park. You 
get to level seven and you get to do this quest, and you get mm -hmm. to level twelve and you get to do this quest. And it doesn't matter when you started playing, um, which server you're playing on, who you're playing with. The world unfolds in exactly the same way to everyone. And there's no really you can't really change the world in any way. You can't structure it. There's no possibility for kind of emergent change to how the world evolves. It's just like being on a roller coaster. This is the part that goes down, and then it goes up, and here's a loop, and you experience that. And having said that, nothing wrong with World of Warcraft. Obviously, it's been yeah. incredibly successful, and a lot of people really like it. Um, this is just different. The mm -hmm. intent here, and it's experimental and maybe a little bit risky, is that um, in the context of a game like Structure, giving people the power to evolve the world in the direction they want to see it evolve, will produce results that are more interesting for a certain class of player. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thanks, Stuart. No problem.